St. Thomas's Church. Today's reading comes from chapter 8, verses 23 to 27. Jesus calms a storm. Then he got into the boat and his disciples followed him. Without warning, a ferocious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat, but Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we are going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the winds and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and the, the winds and the waves obey him. What are you like on boats? Have you got sea legs? Uh, if 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 I can, I will avoid boats. I don't like boats. Uh, one summer, a few years ago, we were at the seaside and we queued up to go on a, a boat ride uh, just for an hour, just out of the harbour and just up the coast and back again. And as soon as we left the harbour wall, Ah, the, the wind, it was a really massive, strong, hurtling breeze that sort of tossed the boat this way and that way. Well, sort of about like that a bit, but I was terrified. And sure, we're going to smash in the rocks and people were groaning and clutching plastic bags. And there was the skipper at the front driving along, just doing the commentary, telling us the, the seals over there and the birds over there. And he wasn't in, in the sleep, least bit uh, bothered. He was fine because he was used to the seas. When I was a kid, I had an even worse experience. We went on a ferry we were, uh, with my parents. We were crossing over the channel in a ferry and uh, it really was quite a bad storm and the boat was crashing through the waves and people were being ill all over the place. Now, Dad, I'm sorry if he's watching and I'm sure he will after this, told us when we left the car in the car ferry, you don't need coats, it'll be fine. So there we were in t-shirts because it was summer and we were, had to be outside to get some fresh air and we were freezing. We were wrapping literally newspapers around ourselves to keep ourselves warm. We were feeling so bad. Anyway, I, I went for a wander for some reason and as I was going down the, the ferry, there was a door opened and I just saw inside all the crew were there with their uniforms in, tucking into massive big steaming piles of sausages and bacon and eggs and grease piled upon grease. They didn't care. They were just tucking in like it was normal. They were just sailing on on through. They were fine. They were used to the sea. And at the reading we've just heard, there's a bunch of fishermen who are also used to the seas. They're used to the storms and they're used to the waves and they just sail on through. It's everyday life. But when Jesus wants to get across uh, Lake Galilee, they, they think, well, that's fine without a thought. So in verse 23, he got into the boat and the disciples followed him and off they go. It's amazing how quickly life can change. Uh, for us, I mean, a few weeks ago, life was just normal, or as now normal as it ever is. And look where we are within just a few weeks. It's mad, isn't it? Life changed so quickly for us, but even more quickly for these guys in this reading. There's 24. Suddenly, a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. That's a, an odd thing that happens in this part of the world where uh, Jesus was. Storms on this sea, it's a big inland lake. Uh, storms can just come from nowhere. You can have blue skies, a gorgeous day, and then within minutes, clouds gather and gather and build and the storm breaks out. But this, this is one massive storm. It's a corker. We give storms names now, don't we? We've had this year, Kia this year Kiara, Dennis and George. They've, they've triggered some tremendous floods and huge sympathy to people who've, who've been through that. But those storms would be fluffy kittens to this storm in, in Matthew 8. This would be called, I don't know, we get the name, the beast, the monster, Colossus or something. It's devastating. You can see how devastating it is because the fishermen, they're used to storms, the, the waves crashing over the boat, uh, unsettle them because this is big. Because obviously if you have waves, yeah, your boat can ride it. But if the waves are crashing over the boat, then the waves will go in the boat and then the boat will sink. And that's why they're crying out, we're going to drown. They are terrified. They know they're in serious trouble. It's all hands on deck to bail out or to hold on to, to what needs to be held on to. But they look around and where's Jesus? And you see in verse 24, Jesus was sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. I mean, are you serious? I mean, I saw those men eating uh, sausage and eggs 
in the storm, in a mild storm, but this this is sinking the boat and, and Jesus is sleeping. What a contrast. The fishermen are terrified. Jesus is so relaxed. He's sleeping through it. Well, they need him. Every pair of hands is needed to bail out the boat. So the disciples went and woke him, verse 25. Lord, save us. We're going to drown. Help! Help! And he does. Verse 26, he replied, you have little faith. <laughs> Why are you so afraid? Because it's terrifying. Because we're going to drown. But he gets up out of bed. And then verse 26, he rebuked the wind and the waves. He told the waves off told off the wind he sort of rebuked them like they're naughty little children stop it be still be quiet behave and they did incredibly they did the wind stopped blowing the waves calmed completely and it says it was completely calm that's incredible isn't it the men verse 27 the men were amazed and asked what kind of man is this even the winds and waves obey him oh what kind of man indeed this is incredible and it's been an incredible day it seems like it's the same day if you look at the top of verse uh, uh, chapter 8 the beginning of verse 8 before you could just see through the the chapter before they got on the boat jesus was healing people many people perhaps it's the same day i'm not certain but at the beginning of the chapter chapter 8 verse 1 or verse 2, there's a, a man with leprosy who comes, a skin disease, every bit as scary as, as coronavirus. It's contagious and everyone's terrified of anyone with leprosy. They had to self-isolate or they were forcibly isolated, pushed out of the out of the town. And this man comes up to Jesus, verse 2, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Lord, you can heal me. Go on, do it, please. And verse 3, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. Now that's a a huge risk of infection to Jesus but he says I'm willing he said be clean immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy it's like he told off the storm here he's telling off the sickness just go away who is this man have you ever heard of King Canute he's the the king who famously stood by the sea to try and stop the tide coming in he put his crown on and he stands there or sits there on his throne, I don't know, and he says to the tide, stop. Of course, he got wet, very wet, because King Canute wasn't God. King Canute couldn't control nature. He had no power over the sea, over the tides or the wind or whatever. And we wouldn't do any better, would we? When I'm on that boat and I'm, I'm being tossed around in that massive breeze, then I, I'm terrified but I can't stop it. I want it to stop. I want it to go away. But I have no power over the wind or the waves or the sea or the forces of nature or sickness or anything. I don't have power over sickness, illness, nor do you. We can't make the, the virus go away. We could try and tell it off. We could try and tell the virus it's being very naughty and very destructive. We could shout. We could scream. Wouldn't make any difference, would it? We have no power over this virus. We can try our best, and our best is to hide and try and avoid infection. But Jesus, he could heal the man born with this, uh, with this terrible disease just by speaking. He could calm the storm just by speaking. So what's the answer? What's the answer to the fisherman's question? Verse 27, what kind of man is this? Even the winds and waves obey him. Who do you think Jesus is? Because it really matters, doesn't it? When life is shaken up, when the storm we're facing now is like a storm most of us have never faced in our lives, which has trashed our lifestyles and threatens our lives even, then it really matters who Jesus is at a time like this. It really matters who Jesus is. Someone famously said the options are he is mad, bad or God. He's mad, saying he can heal, saying he can calm the storm. He's, he's as mad as a hatter. He's a fraud. He, he's a joke, like, like King Canute. In which case, there's no point looking to Jesus for help. Yet, what did he do in this storm? He, he calmed the storm. What did he do for the man? He healed the man. Perhaps not mad then. What about bad? That it's all a magic trick. 
it's all a conspiracy. Somehow he he gets this man to look like he's got leprosy and then wipe it off his hands. He he knows in this storm the instant when he's going to stop and he just times it perfectly and tricks everyone. Well, no. There were witnesses to see the man with leprosy. They would know who he was. They'd know this wasn't a trick. And these fishermen are experienced. They, they know this is not a normal storm. And yet when Jesus speaks, it, it stops just like that. He's not mad. He's not bad. And if he can heal the man with leprosy, and if he can calm the storm, and he's no fraud, and he's no joke, he's nothing like us, who is he? Well, he claims to be God himself. And if he's God, and if he offers to help us, and if he has the power to help us, then no matter what the storm, then he can calm us. He can calm that storm. He's the one who can help. So, Jesus, you calmed the storm. You got rid of that storm so you could get rid of this one, the one that we face. He got rid of that disease so he could get rid of this virus. Will he calm the storm? Well, he stopped that storm. But does that mean he stopped all storms? Let's get back in the boat. And Rob now is going to read a bit more of Matthew's Gospel. This time, jump forward to Matthew chapter 14. Just a few pages on Matthew chapter 14 from verse 22. Matthew chapter 14, beginning at verse 22. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd after he had dismissed them he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray later that night he was there alone and the boat was already a considerable distance from land buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it shortly before dawn jesus went out to them walking on the lake when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and, beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were on the, in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Thanks, Rob. It's a bit of deja vu, isn't it? The disciples are in a boat and there's another storm. But this time Jesus isn't with them. He's on the shore. He's, he's up a mountain. He's praying and he doesn't calm the storm. The storm wage, rages on this time. Even so, there's a miracle. Listen to what he does in verse 25. Shortly before the dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. He's walking on water on the water that's pretty freaky stuff certainly it freaks out the disciples verse 26 when the disciples saw him walking on the lake they were terrified it's a ghost they said and cried out in fear what else could it be walking on the water walking on the water it's a ghost a spirit an apparition a hallucination except this vision this ghost this hallucination speaks to them verse 27 but immediately jesus said to them Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. It's like he's repeating himself. A storm repeats itself and he's repeating himself. Back in chapter 8 he said, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Again now, have courage, don't be afraid. Be strong, have faith. Don't worry. Why not? There's a storm. But don't worry because Jesus is there. That's what he says. And there are three small ver words in the middle uh, of verse uh, 27, where he says, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Now, there's a subtlety in those words that may be lost on us. It's a, a sort of Bible hint. 
in the old part of the Bible, the Old Testament before Jesus, God reveals himself and tells people his name. I am, he says, which means I am who I am. I will be what I want to be. I can do what I want to do. I am what I am. I am who I am. I am in charge. I am sovereign. I am king. I am God. And when Jesus says, it is I, it's subtlety that's lost on us, perhaps. But if you know the signs, if you know the Bible language, it shouts out loud. He's saying, I am, I am God. That's what he's claiming in the middle of this storm as he's walking on water. Well, look, if you think that's too subtle, even if you dismiss that, this is no ghost and no apparition, no spirit or hallucination. Jesus is walking on the water. This is... This is one up on King Canute. And which of us could do that? He must be God if he can do that. If you'd dismiss what he says, he can do this. Who else could do that? But the intriguing thing is the story reminds us of last time on the boat. The boat, the fishermen, the wind, the waves. But this time is different. Jesus doesn't rebuke the wind. Jesus doesn't calm the waves. Jesus doesn't stop the storm. He could. He did it before. He has the power, the authority. He is God. He's proved that. He's acting like God now, walking on the water. But he doesn't calm the storm. He walks through the storm. He's still God. He's still in control. But he doesn't take away the storm. He walks through it. And he walks with Peter. Peter's not sure this is not a dream. So verse 28, Lord, if it is you, if, if this isn't a dream, if you're real, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Prove it, Jesus. If you're really real, if you're really powerful, if you're really God, then get me to walk on the water too. Then I'll know. Come on, he said. And Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. Jesus was real. There was no ghost. Jesus was real. He's the real deal. He really does get Peter to walk on water. God really is. Jesus really is powerful. He really is God. And yet suddenly Peter freaks. Verse 30. When he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink. It's not that he's lost faith in himself. Sometimes people say, oh, you've, got, you've got to believe in yourself. That's not what's going on. He's lost faith in Jesus at that moment. He's seen the wind. He's seen the waves. And his eyes were on Jesus, but now they're, they're on the wind and the waves and the, what's happening round about him. And he freaks. He gives up his faith he, and he begins to sink. Now we're in a storm. A storm like most of us have never faced in our lives. It's trashed our lifestyles, it's threatened our lives, and it threatens to get a lot worse before it gets better. And it's really unsettling. And if you're watching this today, presumably you have your eyes on Jesus, or you've joined us to think whether you'd like your eyes on Jesus, to, to have faith in Jesus, or you're just trying to work out what you believe. Well, Jesus is the one we've seen who can calm the storm. But with Peter, he's not calming the storm. And for us, perhaps, we look out now and we see the wind and the waves, or we, we see the news, we see the virus, we feel the, ex the restrictions, we, we have this experience, and it's getting worse, the, the people tell us. It's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. The news is increasingly bad. And it may get worse for us if the virus gets us, or gets those we love, if there's sickness, hospital, worry, danger, even death. If the storm rages on, perhaps like Peter, you will take your eyes off Jesus and, and doubt Jesus and look at the wind, look at the virus, look at the news. When Jesus, we think, you should be taking this away. You should calm the storm. But Jesus didn't calm the storm for Peter. He just asked Peter to trust him in the storm. And it was an opportunity for Peter to learn to trust Jesus. He may not take our storm away. All the signs are this is going to continue. But what he asks is for us to trust him. To trust him in the storm. And it's an opportunity for us to learn 
to trust Jesus. Peter cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You have little faith, he said. Why do you doubt? Why do we have little faith? Why do we doubt? Well, Peter's faith clearly grew through this. His small amount of faith, which Jesus says a small amount of faith, faith the size of the tiniest seed can grow. Well, Peter's faith grows through this. He has enough faith to trust Jesus and his faith would grow through this. And ours can too. Because if he doesn't calm the storm, he can still answer Peter's prayer, our prayer, which is, Lord, save me. That's what Peter cries, Lord, save me. Jesus doesn't promise to calm every storm. He doesn't promise to take away the pain. He doesn't promise to make life easy. But he does promise, he does promise to save us. To save us from, from more than the storm, more than the virus, from the greatest ultimate, the ultimate threat we face is death itself in the end. And he promises to rescue us from that. From the small storms, the relatively small storms of virus or or physical storms or whatever, he promised to rescue us from the greatest ultimate threat, the one behind all threats, death itself. He does that by his cross, the death, his death on the cross. By dying there, he forgives us all our rebellion against God, all our doubts and all our shrugging of the shoulders and all our pushing God away. He forgives it all when we trust him. But then he rises again and he beats death. He trounces death. He kills off death, as it were, so that he gets himself through death, or God gets him through death, and he can therefore get us through death. And he promises that to us. He promises to get us through death in the end. So when we know that, when we know the end of our story, the end of our lives, we will be ultimately rescued. We know, in Peter's words, saved. God wins. Jesus wins. And that gives us a reason to trust. Whatever the storm we're going through, whether whatever we face, whatever that does to us, Jesus has died for me and Jesus has risen again for me. So when I cry in Peter's words, Lord, save me, he's actually already answered that prayer, just as he answered it for Peter. Verse 32. And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. It, now it dies down. Now the lesson has been learnt, now Peter's faith grows, then the storm is, is, is turned down by Jesus. Verse 33. And those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. They worshipped him because they realised who he was. We're in a storm, a storm like most of us have never faced in our lives, that's trashed our lifestyles and threatens our lives, and it's only going to get worse, it seems. But look. Jesus is no spirit, no ghost, no apparition, no hallucination. He is real. He has power. He has authority to calm the storm or to help Peter walk through it. He is the Son of God. And so we face a choice. What do we do with this storm? We can make it a reason to doubt, that to wonder if God is there, to think, actually, he's not there. He's not answering my prayer. He's not taking this away. We can use it as a reason to give up on faith. If he doesn't answer your prayer for today, to give me what I want for today, even when it looks brilliant and right, if he doesn't heal me today, I can think, well, therefore, there is no God. And many, many people have done that. They've decided because God didn't answer their prayer, there is no God. Because God didn't follow their agenda, rather than God's agenda, there is no God. Even though God didn't give them what looked amazing and good and brilliant, in the end, they decide there can be no God because he didn't give what they thought was right. Or will you cry out to Jesus, the one who can rescue us, who can take it away, or the one who can walk with us through the storm when he doesn't take it away? Either way, he is the one who will save us, who will ultimately save us, eternally save us if if we cling to him if we keep our faith in him if we trust him through the good times when life's great and we could drift away and through the bad times when we could give up if we cling to him through it all and join the disciples 
when they worshipped him and said, truly, you are the Son of God. Amen. Well, we're going to say a prayer of confession now. It's, it's right to do that, to say, oh God, for the times when I have not trusted you, for the times when I've doubted or wandered off, in the good times when I've just sidelined you, in the bad times when I've doubted you and given up on you, I need to say sorry and turn away from that and ask you to forgive me. And so we do that now with this prayer of confession. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. While Jesus did die for us, and he did that out of grace and love, taking the punishment we deserve so that we can be forgiven absolutely anything. That is his promise and his guarantee. So if you cling to Jesus now, you are forgiven now. You cling to him, you're forgiven for eternity. We thank you and we praise you, Father. Amen. And let's continue in prayer. Father God, we thank you for the Bible. Thank you for all that we've read to encourage us to have faith. Thank you for all that we've heard today. That amazing account of Jesus calming that storm with a word. The amazing account of him healing the man with that disease, with leprosy. Father, thank you that shows Jesus' power, his authority, his strength. Shows us that he is God as well, alongside you, with you, as your son. Thank you for this, the account of the storm Jesus didn't calm, but that he walked Peter through the storm and saved him, and in the bigger way that he can save us. Father, give us faith to look to Jesus in this storm, to trust him, to walk with him in the good days, the sunny days, the great days, and in the bad days, the dark days the storm. Lord, help us trust him and cling to him, no matter what, and cling to your promise to save. Thank you for the proof of your salvation that comes through the resurrection and your promise to bring us through death too. So we pray, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for Kids Grove, for this country, in the middle of this storm. There are many who will be unsettled and scared, many who are ill, and many who are dying, and many who are grieving. Father, we pray that you would use this storm so that people who think they're secure and live on solid ground will discover they're not as secure and solid as they think. As life is shaken up, we pray many would look to you, cry to you, cry to Jesus, Lord, save us. Please do that, Lord, and please give them strength, hope, faith, and love for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for our schools, we pray for St. Thomas's Nursery, St. Thomas's Primary. St Saviour's Academy and the King's School. And we pray for the other schools in Kids Grove, for Reginald Mitchell School, Dove Bank Primary, Kids Grove Primary and Kids Grove Secondary and St John's. Father, these are very difficult and tricky days as some kids are in school and many are not. Father, we pray for the staff that you'd give them energy an inspiration and help as they're working in school some days and working at home other days as they're writing work for for the children and trying to communicate with them and father for the for the children in school and those at home those missing friends 
those who are doing fine at work and those who are really struggling through this. Father, give them patience and give them perseverance. Father, please protect and please, we pray as, as they uh, think about you, as they've perhaps shaken through this, perhaps as they see the online worship, they would feed on you and, and be encouraged to trust you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray often in church for people who we know and love overseas. We pray today for Graham and Jihei out in South Korea, uh, leading a church out there, but Graham is looking for a new job and it's not an easy time to do that. So we pray, Father, you would guide and help them in this tricky process. Please provide for what they need and please help them trust you through this storm and through the storm of coronavirus out there in South Korea. Please help them trust you and grow in faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray especially for our church family. We thank you this week for, for Terry Dale having the operation he needed and being discharged. Thanks for being with him and Pauline through this. We pray for his recovery. We pray for Jean Elliott's son, Stephen, who's been in hospital with breathing difficulties. We pray you'll help Stephen, Jean, Siobhan and their family to look to Jesus in this storm and find rest and peace as they trust you. And we pray, Father, for others known to us. And Father, we pray for all of us, for all of us, whatever life is like right now, whether we're still working or working from home. Either way, Father, help us work well and diligently. We pray for those who are stuck at home for those who are frustrated, getting annoyed and irritated, Lord, help those of us like that to show love and patience. And Father, for those who are lonely or scared, for those of us like that, Father, help us by trusting you and finding in you the peace that only you can bring. Father, you promised to be with us, so keep us close to you, trusting in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we finish our prayers, join them all together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, friends, it's been good to see you, as it were, uh, today. I'm sorry, I can't see you, but you know what I mean. Um, if you've watched this and you're interested to know about Jesus, please do contact me through Facebook, through a message there, or you can find our uh, details on our church website, stthomaskidsgrove.co.uk. I'd love to chat to you, even by webcam or by email, if you're intrigued to know more. Now, after this, we're going to start uh, an all-age talk. We are going to start at 11.30, thereabouts, uh, for that. I'll do a countdown again, like I did for this event. And then at 11.45, we'll meet together for coffee via uh, the Zoom website. Um, I've sent emails to everybody I've got email addresses for um, in church. Uh, if you've not had that, please email me, and I'll try and email in the, in the break that we're going to have now for 15 minutes. Um, and I hope to see you next week, uh, and I hope you will join us as we iron out the little difficulties we, we have week by week. But we're going to finish now with another song that I hope you'll sing with gusto. It doesn't matter who's listening, because God's listening, and we're singing this together as we do so. So the Lord's my shepherd. Let's sing together.
final prayer of blessing. To him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God, our Saviour, be glory, majesty, power and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen.